I added a virtual column to my table and asked for it to be put into the in-memory store, but nothing happened. The question was, why? And to walk through this problem, we'll do a little demo. So here's our in-memory demo addressing the issue of someone said, I have a virtual column, I put it into in-memory and nothing happened. To elaborate nice and easily or to be able to demonstrate this, what I've done is I've created a table called T. It's got owner object type object ID. I've added a virtual column. It's called object details and naturally it'd be very unlikely for you to ever have a virtual column defined in this way. I've deliberately chosen it as four nested square root commands on the object ID. The reason I've chosen this is obviously if I query the object details for a large amount of data, that's going to be some heavy hardcore processing. I'm going to be doing lots and lots of square roots, obviously, for as many rows as there are on the table. That makes it very easy to see if this expression has to be evaluated because it'll be take a long CPU time to do or whether it can be done with a shortcut using say, an in-memory store. We're going to use that column to decide how things go into and come out of in-memory. So I'm going to insert 20 copies of DBA objects into that table. So you can see I've populated that table with about 1. Point, was it 1.6 million rows of data. Let's see what happens with no in-memory in play. I'm doing max of that object details virtual column. And you can see because I'm doing 1.6 million times four square root function calls, it's about five seconds. It takes a long time to do. And that may well be the motivation for putting this virtual column or the entire table into the in-memory column store, effectively to pre-compute uh, some of those results. So this is what I've done. I've said alter table T in memory. And as we know that, that it's the first subsequent read of that table that effectively kickstarts in memory into play saying, yep, you've asked for this to be in memory. Someone's actually now accessing the data. So let's go populate the column store. You can see there, if I look at V dollar IM segments that in the time I've been chattering away that we've actually managed to populate it into in memory. I've got it twice there just in case it was not finished by the time we actually finished talking here. But it's fully in memory now, so I should be able to now query that table as if it was stored in the in memory column store and get all those wonderful benefits. So I run select max object details again, and the first thing you see is something a little bit disheartening. I'm still at five seconds. With five seconds of elapsed time, we know that we're not taking any advantage of the in memory column store. The reason for that is actually well documented. By default, virtual columns will not be put into the in-memory column store if you just put the table into in-memory. And that's because the in-memory virtual columns parameter is set to manual. You have to explicitly nominate them. So let's do that. Alter table in-memory and let's nominate now that virtual column. I'll rerun a select count star from T to kickstart the in-memory column store into play. And we can see that it's now populated and complete. And this is once again a bit disheartening. I'm back to five seconds still. Now, why is that the case? I spoke to the in-memory manager about this and he said, if the table has been fully populated into in-memory column store, simply doing a modification to add a virtual column, a modification to the in-memory definition, isn't enough to actually flush the contents out of the in-memory column store and repopulate it we're generally gonna try and avoid doing that because it's a very expensive operation to do. You need to be a bit more explicit. Let's take it out of in-memory. I'm gonna put it into in-memory and now add the virtual column as well. And now that I've set up that metadata, now I can run the select count star from T. And that's the kickstarting that comes into place after I've told the database about that virtual column. So you can see this time it's completed. It's complete, just double check. Now let's run our select max object details. And as you can see, it's now instantaneous elapsed time near a zero. So that's one of those little tricks that might trap you out if you're using in memory. You need to be very careful about the order of operations. Just coming back after the fact and telling a table, oh yeah, I'd like to change the in memory to do this, to do that, whatever. We're gonna be quite hesitant about throwing stuff away from that in-memory column store because obviously it's incredibly value for, valuable for queries and it's quite expensive to populate the in-memory column store. It's not like the buffer cache where you just drag blocks off disk and stick them in the buffer cache and they pretty much look like they were on disk. We're dragging data off disk and then we're converting rows to columns. We're deduplicating, we're compressing, we're you know doing co column compression units. 
there's a lot of heavy going CPU stuff going on. We're not going to do that just sort of on an ad hoc basis. We're going to try and minimize the impact on your server. Let's move on now, not just on virtual columns, but in terms of actually detecting what's actually going on, how to know without actually running queries whether things are in the in-memory column store or not. And it's actually a little bit, there's a few idiosyncrasies here. So I'm going to take that table out of in-memory and put it back into in-memory, do a select count star, and then populate the in-memory column store. Now at that point in time, you can I did no in-memory and then in-memory, so the virtual column is no longer in the in-memory column store. Can I tell without actually running a query? I can to some degree, and let me describe that better. You can see if I look at I am a column level, that's fairly sort of stands out that it says, yep, the columns owner, object type, and object ID, they're all defined as in memory, but object details is unspecified because I took it out of in memory and just put it back into in memory. I didn't touch the object details column. So that sort of gives us some confidence that yes, it's not in the in memory column store. However, if I now do alter table in memory object details, as we saw in the first demo, that's not sufficient to actually force object details into the in memory column store because it's all nice and freshly populated at the moment. Unfortunately, if I look at I am column level, it's more giving me a impression of the metadata as in, yes, you've told me that you'd like object details to be in the in memory column store, but it's not as we saw before. And this is the key. This VDL of view is I am EU header, the in memory expressions and expressions are like virtual columns. So what expressions are in the in memory column store and at the moment there are none. That's our clue that tells us that there's actually not the in memory population completed for that object details column. So I'll kick it out of in memory, put the whole thing back into in memory and then add in object details as we did before. Give in memory a kick in the teeth to actually say, yep, go and populate it and it's been completed. And now if I look at V dollar IMEU header, you can see there's actually three rows in there. That's our indication that we've actually populated not just the in memory column store, but some in memory expressions as well. As we saw in the second demo, that actually is our way of seeing that the object details is actually in the in memory column store. So it's one of those things you need to be careful here because just doing the metadata, telling the database what you would like in and out of the in memory column store isn't sufficient activity to actually force things into the in memory column store because we're going to try avoid those CPU overheads when we run it. Let's look at a non virtual column example here where we nominate different kinds of in memory compression for different columns. So I'm going to create a table called T as 20 copies of DBA objects. And now I'm going to nominate all sorts of different levels of compression for the in memory column store. So owner on object ID, they're going to be for query, object type, object type for DML, object name for query high, etc, etc. Lots and lots of pieces of metadata there. And I've also said I don't want duplicated and sharded columns uh, in the in memory column store at all. So I've done all that. I do a select count star to prime the column store. I go look at IM segments and there's nothing there. Maybe that's just the complexity of the metadata means it's taking a long time to do it. So I try again, it's still not there. If I go look at, let me scroll back a touch, I am column level, you can see all the metadata is there for query low, for query high, default for query low, etc. All the metadata was preserved, but I haven't actually populated the in memory column store. It's still empty. What I do need to do is follow up with an explicit in memory for at the table level. Just nominating all the individual columns is really just doing a metadata definition. It's only when I come along and afterwards say, yep, I've defined all my metadata. Now let's put the whole thing in memory and then give it a count star to give it a prime. And there we have, it's actually now completed and in the in memory column store. I should note, there's no change in the IAM column level table. There's no flag in that view that tells you, oh, it's just metadata. It's not in the in memory column store or it's metadata and I've pushed it in there. You don't get that unfortunately from there. I really just wanted to show you those because it explains why some people are critical of in-memory sometimes because what they think is in the in-memory column store uh, is not and, and perhaps vice versa. So you need to be aware of that, that you need to be careful in terms of the order in which you apply these commands 
and obviously to go check the V$IM, etc. reviews to make sure your data is actually in the in-memory column store to make sure you get those amazing benefits of performance in particular. Uh, because in-memory, every time I do an in-memory demo for a bit, it blows my mind and it generally blows their mind as well in terms of just the astounding performance and improvements you can get. And don't get me wrong, I know it ain't cheap, uh, but yeah, you get what you pay for. I'm